returned once again today to deliver a very long awaited episode of Stein's at Zero because I wasn't actually here for the actual. Ooh, old Twitch just kicked in quite quickly, actually. Yeah, Twitch didn't kick in yesterday straight away, which actually kind of surprised me. So yes, as I was saying beforehand, this is a long way in the episode because what happened was, I can't remember what happened on the Wednesday, I think my back pains came back, and that's what happened on Wednesday. Thursday, I got I got ill. I was, I was like, oh god, I was going to cover it on Wednesday, and I got ill. Friday, I literally had no energy. Saturday, I was actually I was actually out after I covered Hina Matsuri, and then Sunday, Sunday's a really weird day for me because I'm actually really freaking tired on the Sunday, which is always the most inherently weird thing ever. And Monday, which was yesterday, I believe. Yeah. Yes, it was Monday. <laughs> I can't remember what days I'm on anymore. I thought I would actually cover Golden Kamui on the day of release. I actually couldn't very use today as the catch up for Stunt at Zero. So that's what I'm actually doing today. So yeah, sorry, apologize for me being a bit um, late with this one. It's just um, yeah, it's a load of factors. Just kind of fact, loads of factors factored into why I wasn't around. I do apologize once again. But anyway, enough enough of um, enough of real world issues. Um, yeah, so. Last week's episode, which is now probably, yeah, last week's episode, actually was quite the episode, to actually say the least. It, it ended on a massive um, cliffhanger of the fact that Karisu comes back. But it kind of begs the question whether or not she's actually come back in the world line we actually know and actually very much seen quite a lot of, which is world line A. It was a different world line entirely, because that's, that's the thing. It's one of those things that you imagine in your brain it's world line A because she's alive, but in theory it could be a, a completely different world line. And it's one of those things that even though she's back, you sort of wonder whether or not it's actually kind of going to be all right, whether or not there's going to be the implications behind it, because it's one of those things at Steins Gate, you have to kind of think to yourself, oh God, what's the worst possible outcome? Because kind of what does happen in the show is always that worst possible outcome that actually does happen in a changing of timelines or world lines. So be one of those things to see what happens in this episode. I actually heard quite a lot about this episode as well. So it'll be interesting to see what actually does happen. I'm actually... I've been, been really, really, really wanting to watch the episode. I just, want to have, I just want to have a really clear mind to watch and actually kind of dissect everything about it because I knew this would be the kind of the doozy one, as they say. The big one, as they say, as well. So anyways, put on Twitter that I've gone live. Gone live for Steins Gate Zero Episode 8. Yeah, yeah, sweet. Right, just in case I actually haven't introduced the episode itself, we are watching today episode 8 of Science 8 Zero. I don't even know if I actually introduced it beforehand, so I thought, just in case I haven't introduced it, I'll introduce it now. Because my brain tends to tends to forget whether or not I do actually introduce things or not. I don't know why it does, but that happens. But anyway, enough talk of um, my problems with my brain and, re and remembering things that I'm 21 years old. Let's actually get a show on the road. So in 3, 2, 1, let's get this thing now. That hug is that hug means a lot. That's the problem. It's one of those things. It's just, it's a hug, but it's a it's a hug that has about a thousand different meanings to it. It's just one of those things that you've always wanted to see it happen, just because of the circumstances behind what's actually happened to Okabe throughout the whole entire series, and also subsequently the end of the first series. It's one of those things. It's it's a long time coming to see her back. It's quite nice, but. As I've always said about this series, it's, it kind of plays into your paranoia. It's this idea of whether or not everything is as it seems. Which, let's face it, isn't always the case. Because it can't be. It's Steins Gate. It's one of those things, it just can't be, like, clear-cut. There's always got to be something else.
So this is world line A then. This is world line A. Yeah, it is. I always maintained that it's a different world line because the actual use of colour in the world line A was a lot more brighter. It wasn't like it was completely bright, but it was brighter than world line B and then subsequently any other world line. Just so I always thought maybe we'll come back to world as we go into a different world line, but I was wrong. Yeah, it's one of the things I've always liked about the show as well is the fact that it keeps on cutting to news reports of earthquakes. And I always kind of wondered why why that was. This is something from world, and this is something from the previous series that I've completely forgetting about. But it always kind of cuts back to random uh, news reports about it.
Ooh, wait a second. I must say, the Directions episode is fantastic. Like, I've said it for the whole entire series, that the, that the actual, um, uh, the actual, um, Directions are amazing, but I feel like this episode is the kind of the encapsulation of that idea, the way that actually just kind of directing each scene.
This is actually really hurting my heart, like really badly. Now what have you got to do this to me now? What have you got to do this to me now? Of all things to do to me. You keep harking back to the original series, it just breaks my heart every single time it happens. That's the thing, every single time it happens my heart just busts into two. I take it this event must be the reason to why he sends the video back to the original timeline. I don't think we got that event just yet. Oh, come on. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Just my heart just keeps on breaking into two. I can't confirm it's probably in four now, let's face it. Man.
Oh, come on. That was just a constant, just... It's just a constant... Just hit you straight in the chest every single goddamn time. That was just... That was horrible. That was horrible just to sit through when you think about it. Every single time it just it just wants to remind you, oh yeah, by the way, life ain't that great. It's just like, God damn it. It's like, why would you do that? Especially at the end when you actually heard the lines of I feel the same I love and it just stopped. You're like, God damn it. Why am I doing this to me now, anime? Like, you've done it for the whole entire series so far, even subsequently the end of the first series as well. And it just kind of all just comes to a head. You're just like, why? Why would you do that? Oh, it's just... That constant reminder, it's, that's the thing, I, it's always constantly reminding you of the previous timeline, the kind of, I like the way they kind of implemented the way the aesthetics looks, look in the current timeline to the previous timeline as well, because it kind of does in theory fool you somewhat, because it, it constantly like, okay, is this World Line A, is this not World Line A, we don't know, that's the thing. It's one of those things, you're kind of always questioning your brain what's really going on here. It's one of those things, the way they kind of directed the original timeline, it was very kind of like, you just didn't know too much what was going on. I mean, as soon as she said about my Yuri, like, yes, it's World Line A. That's also kind of very evident because it's one of those things that World Line A must uh, constitute that whole entire idea. So you kind of realize there and then it's World Line A. But still, the way they kind of went about showing it, it kind of doesn't very fool you. It had me fooled as well because I was thinking to myself, would they go back to World Line A? Would it go, would it go to a new World Line? We just don't know. It's one of those things. It's an interesting prospect. This idea of, what, of more existing timelines than just what we know as A and B. It's one of those things that the show does perfectly. It explores the idea of what is truly going on here. And I thought it was actually kind of neat. The way that she kind of went about... We had Carisu back. That's the thing. We've had Carisu back. But it isn't in this... It isn't... It kind of tells you there and then. When you think about it, it's not what you expect to actually happen. It's not It's not kind of telling you it's sunshine and rainbows. Because you still you still have lost Mayuri. So it's one of those things. We got back Carisu, but at the same time, you've lost Mayuri. And just, it's one of those things. They could have gone about showing it a different way completely. Kind of showing it's a bit, bit more bright and a bit more kind of, kind of, color, kind of colorful. Say the words correctly. Kind of colorful. But no, they kind of went about showing it as this depressing outlook. Because still, he's lost someone. He hasn't kind of... He's won 50%, but it isn't kind of what he wants still. He's got someone back, but it isn't a kind of... It isn't 100% there. It's actually kind of one of those things that reminds you that it's still kind of cruel when you think about it. Like the idea of you want someone back, but at the same time, if you get that person back, you're losing someone else. And it's one of those things that there has to exist a timeline where both can survive. We just don't know it just yet. We don't even know how one can get there. It's one of those things we know that still World Line A can actually be achieved. So that's just one of those things. But world line C, D, or E, we don't know just yet. It's one of those things that we, it ha it's one, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be plaguing your mind for the whole entire series of whether or not you actually can get both of them back. And I think it's brilliantly directed. Really, this episode was brilliantly directed. It's one of those ones that it. It was very, it was very subtle. It wasn't, it wasn't like very in your face. It wasn't episodes actually kind of doing too much in a way of like grandiose things. It did everything you need to do very subtly, and I thought subtly, I think that's how you say it. And I thought it was actually brilliantly done because it's one of those things that this show works so well and how it's directed, and the way they didn't use too much of the soundtrack, and the way they just kind of allowed the characters to move the plot forward. It's one of those things that just. It's brilliant. You just, you just got to see at that one se section that the characters do really just command each scene. And the direction really does help that as well. Because the shot construction, as I said beforehand, has been brilliant. I think this episode actually was brilliant in its own right. It had a lot of canton angles. It had a lot of... Yeah, that one scene with the spiraling um, coffee as well, which is also one of those... I think it's, I believe, I believe the hark back to the idea of a person going insane. Like the idea of a swirling, co a sw a swirling cup of coffee. I believe, that's how, I believe, it's, I believe that's a technical term for it. It's one of those things. It's just it was brilliantly directed. I can honestly say I just don't I don't see anything wrong with this episode because it's brilliant. I think, especially at the end, going back to like the previous series as well. It's one of those things. It just you saw it there and then. My point exactly is the idea of the wall being brighter in that timeline in that kind of universe. But it was one of those things. I I enjoyed the fact they actually kind of went about showing it. In this current episode, the same as it is in the other world itself, and also like the fact that Okabe tries to explain, look, there might exist a there might exist a world where she survives because it's one of those things that 
it's completely crazy in that well in that in that timeline, isn't it? It's completely crazy because no one actually really knows besides Okabe. Okabe is the only person that's actually experienced it, and it's one of those things everyone else is like, dude, he can't be saying those things. And it's kind of true because no one really knows besides Kurisu who kind of cottons onto everything going on. But it's one of those things. I thought it was actually one of those things. It was neat to actually kind of see him just say, look, maybe it does exist one timeline in which he does survive, but you kind of taken as an taken as taken as if it's a joke as if it's not true because let's face it no one really kind of ad, can imagine yeah it does actually exist but man it was one of those ones that it just constantly it built the tension just using characters rather than music rather than anything else really and i thought it was one of those ones it kind of had a brilliant brilliant use of rising action but it wasn't using the conventional terms it was just using it in the idea of the characters slowly rising the action to the, to a halt and then kind of just kicking you straight in the chest actually kind of go oh god why are you doing this to me now and i thought if anything this episode will go down as one of probably one of the best, best episodes of, best episodes of the whole entire year so far this is the sole reason it was just done absolutely exquisitely there wasn't anything wrong with it it wasn't really but now it's kind of one of those things that whether or not he does go back to the previous timeline because <laughs> I was thinking to myself during the last section, last section of the episode when she was like, you can go back to the previous timeline, don't worry. I thought to myself, you know what would be kind of horrible if he goes back to a different timeline? Like It's a completely different one. It's complete alien to, to him. That he doesn't know because I don't believe we've got the event where he sends the video back to the original timeline. So that's still kind of up in the air. I thought originally this episode actually might deal with that whole entire plot idea, but it didn't deal, it didn't deal with it the end so we have that whole entire thing still going around so it's one of those things that it'll be kind of be kind of even worse if he actually does in theory go further and it's actually he sees a different world that's completely just just engulfed in destruction which is it would be kind of horrible but it's one of those things that it kind of tells you look it's not all kind of great like it's not always certain where you will end up it's certain it's certainly it's always one of those things that you can't constantly testing yourself whether or not you will get back to where you want to go but who knows maybe he actually will get back there but as, as, as I was thinking as a prospect maybe what happens if he doesn't go back then what happens what's the implications at least we actually got the idea of what actually does happen if the actual kind of the world lines changes like we kind of got the idea of what happens there and I also like the fact that constantly I don't know if I've been consciously actually conscious, consciously like kind of observing it, but I swear there is, ha there always has been this idea of this news report coming out saying about earthquakes constantly all over the world. And I thought to myself, does that constitute as something like going on in the universe? It must actually kind of equate to what's really going on here as well. So it always kind of goes back to it. It's, it's one of those things that. Stars it doesn't actually consciously consciously do anything to actually kind of waste your time. Everything it does is kind of very very crucial to the plot. So that has to deal with something. That has to do with something. That it kind of goes back to the actual kind of overall plot idea. But we don't adjust yet. It's one of those things that it it's it's interesting because it's always happening and it happened after he got to that timeline. So it's one of those things where or not it actually does him for a constitute to him changing times. We just don't know. It's interesting for that reason. But yeah. This would be one of those series is you have to kind of... You can't predict it. That's the thing with this episode. You couldn't predict what's going to happen next. And I don't believe we can predict the whole entire series in its nutshell. And it's just read the original novel itself. So you really can't predict what's going to happen next. And I actually quite like that because you're always on your toes. You're always kind of paranoid what's actually going to happen next. Whether or not it actually is going to be alright. We just don't know. But yeah. So... Do apologize once again for actually kind of being a bit late with this stream. I just thought I'd actually come back to this episode kind of very much fresh-minded because last week's actually kind of hectic a little tiny bit. So, yeah, ho hopefully I'll be here tomorrow. I believe I probably am. So I think Nora Garvey's coming out tomorrow as well. The actual manga. So it'll be kind of a very, very, um, a very, very packed day, as they say. So anyway... With all that said, I have indeed been the driver. If you have enjoyed this whole entire stream on Twitch, then do leave a follow because indeed it does something quite a bit. If you enjoyed it here on YouTube and you do want to leave a like, then do leave a like because indeed it does something quite a bit. If you enjoyed it here on YouTube and you want to stay that little bit longer, then do leave a sub because indeed it does something quite a bit. But until tomorrow, hopefully, I believe, Noragami and Science Gate, I will see you guys later.